I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, and my sister, Maddie, who before starting her own adventure, joined us in rocking out a state-of-the-art refit on our floating home. Now, we're ready to set sail to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. The day is finally here. We're ready to cast the lines and get this boat out of Georgia. But before we can set off, we still need to stop at the fuel dock and get some more fuel. How am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, can I swear? You can say whatever you want. Awesome. This boat shall never grace the presence of Thunderbolt Marine again. She won't need it. Sid, how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm really excited. Good. I've been waiting to go to Florida for months. I know we have to come back, but we're going to Florida. So, I'm gonna be there for a little bit. So. <laughs> I'm excited. I gotta take a video of this moment for social media. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that we talk about our first a lot. And today we had another huge first, which I'm super, super excited about. And I'm so happy that I can share it with all of you. Uh, we did our first day with our Leopard 50 and I am beyond thrilled on how it turned out. She is so smooth in the water. We had a beautiful day. It was a little cold here in Georgia still, but the sun was out for most of the day. I have this beautiful sunset that I'm staring at right now. And I just feel so blessed and thankful that I'm able to experience this and then able to share it with all of you. It's the greatest thing in my life and I am so thankful for it. It feels nice to be headed back to Florida and to be out of Georgia. We've had a long run here and I'm ready to be back to the blue water and the sun. And even when it rains in Florida, it's still better than being cold here in Georgia. So yeah. I was just talking to mom about how I get to experience these beautiful sunsets just about every single day or even just beautiful moments in my life. And I am always caught between whether I should stop and take a picture or just enjoy the moment for what it is. And I stared at this sunset for quite a while before I actually brought the camera out and I just couldn't help myself. I had to share it with all of you. It's so beautiful and oh that's cool. You can see it reflecting in the freaking gel coat back there. It's beautiful. <laughs> So to end this perfect day of first, I want to share this beautiful sunset with all of you and I hope you enjoy it as much as I am. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below and don't forget to click that bell so you're notified when we post our next video. Thank you so much. After a good night's sleep in Brunswick, Georgia, we were up again, bright and early, and ready for a new day on the water.
Hey guys, so we finally made it back to our our first solo anchorage with just Kim and I. Uh, we're in St. Mary's, right by these lovely paper mills. And uh, unfortunately, by that boat over there that is now beached. It, it wasn't beached when we were here before. No, it wasn't. But Sad. how does it feel like making another passage and going back to a place that you've been before? Because everything's been a first time. This is your first second. This is the first second. <laughs> no, it's really cool because we were way far out and I saw the just the skyline kind of of the paper mill. And I'm like, I think that's where we anchored when we came through to go up to Georgia. And we had a little bit of a conversation. I am not the, the directionally spot on one he is. She's directionally challenged. I'm directionally challenged. And sure enough, he zoomed in on the map and he's like, no, I think it was over here. And he said he had to say the words that tasted like vinegar. You were right. Yeah. So yeah, here we are. All right, guys, I don't know if you can hear the screaming behind me or underneath of me. Um, we've polished the fuel twice in this boat and, of course, had a new fuel and all of that. But with all the condensation we've had for the last, oh, it's, been, it's been a year um, since the boat got hauled out, uh, we're getting a lot of fuel or a lot of uh, water in the fuel, which is causing like a, like a white vapor coming out of the exhaust at high RPMs. And... What that means is just the differential pressure between the engine sucking so much fuel, the fuel filter can't get all of the water out as it passes through, um, which causes a little bit of white vapor. So there's a water sensor that's on the bottom of the, the initial fuel filter that allows us to, um, or that allows the engine to tell you when there's actually water in the fuel um, and that, that it's built up to a level that you need to address it. So I just heard it and um, I'm gonna go down in and show you how I actually um, uh, clean that out and get the water out and how much water is actually coming out. I've looked in the tank and there's no water at the bottom of the tank. So this is water that's in solution in the actual diesel fuel. So here we go. So annoying. All right, so I've got this fuel filter right here. This is the sensor. It's down here at the bottom. And that sensor hooks up to the engine harness and that water sensor determines if there's any moisture in the bottom. So I need to, there's an actual drain fitting at the bottom right here. So I kind of hold this in place. I'll try to do this one-handed to show you what this is like. So take and loosen this fitting here at the bottom. And that really should allow the water to drain out, but it doesn't. I have to take this and loosen it. And you can see all that water drain Up, and you see it starts turning pink, which means there's water and fuel. I want it to be bright pink. And then I'm gonna close this back down, which will slow the flow a little bit. And then, tighten this at the bottom. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pump the prime bulb to prime the engine, or prime the fuel back up again. So now, with a clean hand, I'm gonna turn this back on, and you see, no air. 30.3 hours, so I'll put that in the log book that I emptied it at 30.3 hours, and we're gonna start it back up. Here we go. Happy motor, happy boat. How fast are we going? What? So 
Kim's bringing us up to 2,750 RPM. But that kept us, right now we're on a little bit of an outgoing tide. About nine knots. So that's nine knots, including that we're dragging the dinghy. Can't show you too much because that's, I'll go and show you. That's a pretty awesome thing. But it's big. It weighs about 1,200 pounds and towing it drags the boat down. And we're uh, back heavy. As you can see, I've got about 900 pounds of lumber and everything on the back of the boat, plus full fuel tanks and everything else. And when we power this boat up, because there's no mast pushing down on the front of the boat, there's several thousand pounds that are not on the boat that should be. So the boat actually tilts up like a power boat and we put out this ridiculous wave. All right, and there's the vapor coming out. At high RPM. A little bit of moisture gets by and it turns into a steam coming out of the engine. one was a little too close for comfort. I think we're just gonna clear. <laughs> Barely fit under there. By about eight oh, inches. Oh you know what, eight inches is plenty. There, a car went over when we were under it and I was like, you're kidding me. <laughs> <not just kidding. laughs> Feeling refreshed warm and even happier than the day before it was time to leave our second stop saint augustine and head toward cape canaveral how you doing there cap good yeah yeah i don't know if all that's necessary where yeah. are we florida <laughs> Thank you. What do you think, co-pilot? Where are we at? Oh, my first mate. Yeah. yeah. For real though, what city are we in? Yes. I have no idea. Do you know what city we're in, Kim? Daytona. Daytona. Yeah. yeah. Ah, left turn. <laughs> That's far. That's far. With a bit of free time now that the river runs pretty straight, we took this opportunity on this overcast afternoon to do some chores. Stella desperately needed a nail trim, so we're giving her a little spa time. As we come into the home stretch of day three and arrive in Titusville for our last night before reaching our final destination for this trip, we had this amazing sunset guiding us through the channel to our resting place for the night.
Our morning departure from Titusville near Cape Canaveral started out pretty overcast, but the sky cleared up as we came into Fort Pierce. Before turning off the ICW, we pulled the dinghy in close so that I could climb in and lead the way down the canal because we didn't have any electronics hooked up on the Leopard yet. And since Ty hooked up that Raymarine chart plotter when we rigged the dinghy, I was able to have depth and guide us through safely. We were greeted by Dave, Colleen, their beautiful Leopard 50, as well as their neighbors, Marilyn and Terry, who helped us with the lines and fenders and getting us docked safely in our new home for the next few months.